It says we're going live in three. Oh, Marissa, this stinks. <sighs> we're live now. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am so glad you're here. Welcome. And we have one of my favorite um, meals that we're going to be demonstrating. And it's a meal that I could barely give you a recipe for. And so I gave you a recipe for the sauces and some of the side um, uh, elements of it. For example, we can use roasted vegetables. So I'm showing you how to roast vegetables. But really, the beauty is I've got a basket here that represents a lot of what was in my refrigerator, and I could have simply done it with that. And you can do the same thing, assuming you've got things in your refrigerator that are whole food, plant-based. And the reason, as you know, and I'm going to welcome those of you who are here for the first time, so you may not know that the title of our cooking class, Recipes for Longevity, is based on our belief that a perfect diet is a whole food, plant-based diet. That means mainly fruits and vegetables and legumes and grains and seeds and nuts because they nourish us so well. And if you want to read up on that, consider this book, Eat to Live by Joel Furman. He talks a lot about nutritional density and about choosing foods based on their nutrients. As a matter of fact, he has favorite foods that he considers the most nutritious of all. His acronym is G-BOMBS, G-B-O-M-B-S. G is greens, B, berries, O, onions. Can you imagine onions? M, mushrooms, mushrooms. Um, and S is seeds and nuts. And I will talk about foods as they relate to their nourishing properties in that way. But I'm also going to be talking about foods that nourish us in another way. And it's a way that your moms and that doctors and that just about anything you read will remind you to consider. And that is to up your fiber. And some people say, well, of course I'll up my fiber. I understand it helps me eliminate better. Well, it goes beyond that. And if you read or listen to. And so I want to mention, yeah, you can get the books. I use them as references. You can see I have some um, tabs in them. But what I do a lot of is I simply Google their name, the word video, and then I look at the subjects they're talking about and I'll play their videos. And this is Dr. Bolsovitz. And I've talked about him before, Fiber Fuel, his entire book. And he's a internist, triple board certified as a researcher, as well as carrying a graduate degree in, I think it's um, bio, um, uh, is it bio nutrition, I don't know. But in any case, he's well, well versed on our gut. And that's what he talks about. He talks about the reason for eating fiber that goes and foods that go beyond just the nourishment but the fact that they have fiber and the fiber feeds what we call our microbiome, which is a trillion and who knows how many um, microbes in our gut that basically create short chain fatty acids that make the rest of our bodies work. So I'm going to be talking a lot about those kinds of foods. And I'm going to be using two recipes from this book and well, one of them may not be from this book, but I gave you the recipe. It may be from her other book, The Secrets of Ultimate Weight Loss. And the reason I'm even going to mention that is not only that I'm using those recipes and they're fabulous. My favorite, favorite dressing that goes on the what we call Buddha bowl, and I'll give you a little history to that name, is her um, house dressing unbelievably tangy and wonderful well we have a treat coming and that is that next week we're going to have a chance on tuesday and at this point it's six to seven 
You'll have to watch for the announcement. It may change maybe an hour earlier or so. I'm not sure. But in any case, it's set for 6 to 7 next Tuesday. And Chef AJ is going to be talking with me about how the tenets, those pillars of lifestyle medicine, have affected her in her life. And she's going to talk about um, why she's chosen to eat what she eats and demonstrate to us. And um, it's going to be a wonderful conversation. And then in December, she's going to be interviewing Dr. Dysinger. So things are heating up. She's got thousands and thousands of people, um, tens of thousands that follow her. And a lot, I, off and on, I'll talk about my husband and say, well, my husband and I do this, and my husband and I do that. And I said, come say hi, Tim. This is my husband, Tim. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted him to introduce himself so that um, when I say, Tim this, Tim that, you'll know who he is. Right now, he's enjoying some movie in the back. So, thanks. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get something started. I'm going to start the roasting of the vegetables. And if you've done this, you have your way. And that's fine. Um, I heated, preheated the oven at 400 degrees. You can, the, the value and the reason to roast vegetables is that as they cook, it brings out their natural sweetness and they, what we call caramelize. And so they are tender enough to eat um, cold or hot. Um, they're not only tender, but they're also uh, even sweeter and their flavor is even richer. Hold on. Um, hold on, sorry. I was hearing Frank Sinatra. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we're working with. If you, I hope you did, see that online, we had not only the link, well, if you're on here, then my guess is you've seen this, the link here, but you also saw several of the bowls I make. They never look alike. I take a picture every day, and this happens to be lunch. Our heaviest meal is lunch, and, um, you're going to see how I put this together. And a lot of times I'll use roasted vegetables or roasted potatoes or uh, and grains. And again, you'll see how that's put together. So let me wash again. Okay. So I created carrot, what I call carrot batons. And I'm going to throw those down. Now, some of you roast with different kinds of seasonings, maybe different kinds of sauces. I'm going to put the tiniest bit of oil on my hands. You see, saw that in the recipe. I'm going to give them room because I, I don't want them to steam. If you use too many, and really what we were aiming for was three cups, but if I can get more than that on here, I'm going to do it because I want as much roasted vegetable as I can get. Um, for the future meals, because all of these store beautifully cooked, roasted, etc., for most of the week, so that you can make bowls with whatever you have left over uh, all through the week. You can make them for dinner, you can make them for uh, lunches. Some people eat their greens for breakfast, and we'll be talking about the greens that we use in a bowl. So, what I've got is carrots. These are golden beets, have um, Brussels sprouts. I have broccoli. I have cauliflower. There's another beet and another. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to do some mushrooms as well, but I'm going to do them on another plate. Okay, actually, this worked out perfectly because I have room for them. If you go to look for a pan like this, some people call them cookie sheets. Actually, in the trade, they a lot of them call them sheet pans or jelly roll pans. They have the lip on them. I must have five because they're so handy to with food prep to sometimes just arrange full foods that you can throw in an oven at the last minute. Okay, so we have these that are going to roast 
And then I'll show you what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do with some mushrooms. But what I also add to that that I happen to like is a little bit of oil. If I spray the oil over it, I'm not going to get it even. So what I do is I actually spray it into my hand. I've measured this and two sprays is a half a teaspoon. So I'm using very, very little, but even a little makes a difference. As in terms of, I'm gonna say, um, uh, preserving some of the moisture. And I'm rubbing these in, I'm gonna do another two. And then I'll do the carrots and the beets. And they're glistening just a little bit. And when they brown and when they roast, they, they'll stay a little softer, not quite as um, brittle. And I just like that. A teaspoon of oil, and, and I don't count calories, and I don't recommend that you worry about that because if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet with very little oil, and when I say very little, this is my example of it, Chef AJ, if she were doing this demonstration, she wouldn't even consider oil. Never, ever uses oil on anything and hasn't for, gosh, what, a couple of decades? Um, so she would probably not approve. But in any case, there you have it. All right, so this is going to go in the oven for 25 minutes while we prepare some other things that end up getting combined in any way we want to. So this becomes something that you can have a lot of fun with. Okay. So as that's cooking, I'm gonna get the mushrooms ready and the other part in 10 minutes. So at about 6.20, I'm gonna put this in because it cooks about 10 minutes less. I love roasted mushrooms. And I found a sauce that gives them such richness of flavor, and it's nothing but equal parts of tamari. And I use the organic because anything soy, I use organic. Soy is so heavily um, um, okay, that's how I spray it. If it's not organic, then they will usually spray it with with um, desiccant, which is the way they dry it and pick it. Um, and the GMOs allow for that. They'll use Roundup, etc. And we just don't want herbicides and pesticides on our food. And so organic, I think, is important with soy. Uh, this is gluten-free soy sauce because I do gluten-free everything. Uh, not because it's the popular thing to do. It's because I can't do the gluten. And if you can have gluten, then don't even worry about it. And then I wanted to bring this up. There are several kinds of balsamic vinegars. And the difference, this one I got at Trader Joe's. I wonder if I can show this to you. Here, let me show you. This is traditional balsamic vinegar. It's 6% acidity. And look how it pours. It's just, it's rather liquid. This is a condensed vinegar. There's no sugar in it, and there are a number of flavors that people love to use on their salads. For example, this is from California Balsamic, and it's sweet heat. So it's a balsamic vinegar with um, sort of a chili flavor. I have a hickory smoke flavor, etc. This one is from Napa Naturals. And the difference with these is that most of them are 4% acidity. So they're not as liquid as this. They're not as acidic. And they have a, they're more viscous. And so they stick better onto salad greens, etc. And you'll see that when I pour this, see that? It's thicker. So I made a combination of the balsamic vinegar and the soy. And you can get low sodium soy as well if you're being careful about your sodium intake. And I brush this mixture on the mushrooms. 
and then turn them over halfway through. And I'm going to, they call it turnover, but I'm just going to kind of shake up what I've gotten in there already when I put these in. Well, the other thing I could do is if I had some other vegetables I wanted to throw in, I could put some of that, the this mixture, on those vegetables as well. For example, on Brussels sprouts. Um, I've roasted Brussels sprouts with nothing but the vinegar and the soy, and they glaze with that, no oil, whatever, and they glaze with that. That's another option. In this case, what we're going to do today is I'm pouring in one can drained, a 15, 16 ounce can of um, chickpeas, because one of the things that is important to have on your, um, your Buddha bowls are some kind or is some kind of a protein source. And we'll, we'll again talk about that a little more, but I wanted to get this started. And what I'm sprinkling over it is some cumin and then a little bit of salt and pepper. And I have this ridiculous salt and pepper shaker <laughs> that I bought because my other one was broken and I ran the marshals and I grabbed whatever they have and this is all they have. And I love it because my hands can be dirty and I'm not um, having to mess up the salt and pepper shaker with two dirty hands. All right. So this has been seasoned, salted, peppered. I'll put this in in about 10 minutes. If I had some other vegetables, I'm trying to think of what I have that I could do that with. Well, I'll just show you with the mushrooms. I would brush this on them, um, and then you could see how they glaze. But uh, you can you can play with that on your own. All right. So I'm going to put this aside for about another five minutes, and then I'll put that in the oven. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I bet you some of you. At least one of you is saying, wait a minute, Nan, you didn't finish off all the vegetables. So let's just do it. I'm going to put this in here, throw it on, and then stir it around. And we can kind of, we can kind of look at that. All right. And then that goes down. Now, these won't roast as long as the, um, those are because we're not going to roast the garbanzos as long. You know, the first time I did this, I didn't read the recipe that carefully, and I put the garbanzos in a pan very similar to this, kind of pushed them off to the side and put extra vegetables, and did them for 25 minutes the way I was and am now, uh, in order to roast the vegetables well enough. And they were simply crispier than probably they would have been. They were they were crunchy and they were delicious. And I used those on my the bowls. So let's see, is it time yet? No, I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. I wanted to show you something. One of the things that I'm going to be covering is the variety of foods, all of which will just make your body your body from a phytochemical, phytonutrient um, standpoint, but also from a fiber standpoint, stand up, take notice, and just be so happy. But I also wanted to show you some a tool that I don't use very often, but occasionally I find to be handy if I want to make things look that much more interesting. So what I have here is a beet. And if you've ever cooked with beets, you know that once you've cooked it, if you touch this, your hands will be red, and they'll be red for a while because beets bleed. Well, um, this is a raw beet, so I was able to peel it raw without getting uh, it on my hands in such a way that I couldn't get it off. And I'm going to press this on. Well, actually, I'll press it on the back. This is called a spiralizer. They're, gosh, what? $20 maybe. Um, move this out of the way. Okay. And I wanted a pretty way of offering beets 
for my um, for my bowl that were raw. A lot of people don't eat. Most people don't realize that you can eat raw beets. They're fabulous. And this is one way to have them cut thinly enough that you can manage it. There, that's it. This little thing comes out. If you've been to my classes before, you know that I don't throw things away that can go into my baggie in the freezer that I can then make broth with. All of my broth is always made from scraps of vegetables. The problem is that a beet is so red, not the, um, oh, here's a little piece of one. Not the golden beets, they won't bleed red, of course. Um, but this beet would turn my entire broth red, and I don't want to do that. So, well, when you're not looking, I'll eat this later tonight. Okay. The other thing that I'll do with this sometimes, and this is easy. It looks like a, a real um, complicated contraption, but it's very easy to clean. The other thing that I'll do, because while we're eating, it's, it's a little bit harder to manage with all of this. So I'll go through, and if you don't have kitchen scissors, gosh, if you get some, you will wonder how you ever live without them because you cut into bags that you couldn't otherwise open. You um, cut the tips off and I'll grab a bunch of green beans and just cut the tips off the, the stem end. The other end you can leave, but the stem end, uh, cut that off because that's tough and it's hard to, um, hard to eat. Okay, there. Now I've got these manageable little pieces of beet strings uh, that will look really pretty on our bowl. But I'm going to put this here for now. I'm starting to smell the, um, the roasted veggies, and they're smelling really good. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. All right. You want to see something? Oh, I'm going to be mad at myself for doing this. I hope I can line myself up again. But can you see... I'll move. Can you see the inside of my oven? Somebody said to me, Nan, don't you ever use your oven? And I said, it looks like that because I don't cook meat in it. If you cook meat in an oven, it spatters. And when it spatters, it makes a greasy mess out of an oven. If you're not cooking meat and there's no spattering, the oven, oh, 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 I'm losing heat. The oven stays really clean. And that's a nice benefit. All right. So we'll, you can see these are all softened. Well, you actually may not be able to see it. Did I line you up again, Will? I hope so. And I'm going to turn these around. When we get these out again, they will be, um, they'll be slightly browned. I'm trying to separate them so that they don't steam. We want them to brown. And I'll put these in again. I'll put this in the lower. Put this one in the upper. I think I'll put these up here. All right. Now what are we going to do? Well, let's get some dressing made. Are we lined up properly? Um, yeah, I think we're fine. So I have to move a couple of things because when we began, I planned on working back there with my um, food processor. And for some reason, um, the electricity, well, it even has a light on. What is the problem? Yeah, the electricity went out on that one plug. So we'll work this way, we'll be fine. All right, this is kind of fun. It's part of Chef AJ's a cookbook. I think it's page 156. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's called butterscotch pudding. 
And if I'm going to give you a dessert, I think it makes sense that it's a dessert that's going to do for you what the rest of your meal does for you. And that is nourish you well. So, oops, let me get this there. Okay. So, into my food processor. And then I'm putting in two cups of sweet potato. And if you look at your recipe, you'll say, man, wrong. It's three cups of sweet potato. Well, I wanted to show you in case you've never cooked with or maybe even purchased a sweet potato. This is a sweet potato that is a little more than a pound. Believe it or not, if you eat a whole food plant-based diet and you're not filling up on oils, you could eat a pound of sweet potato at least once a day. Chef AJ says she eats a pound and a half to a two pound sweet potato every day. Um, be it, well, I should say potato, be it a white potato or a sweet potato. Um, and she's quite slender um, because what you will find is with a whole food plant-based diet, you're primarily eating starches, but they're whole food starches, foods with fiber. And a lot of that fiber, well, some of it never really gets digested. It goes in, it goes out. And so sometimes the calories that are shown aren't even the calories that register. So this was baked the way it's noted on the recipe. And that is baked in the oven. Don't steam it. Don't roast it. Don't boil it. And baked in the oven for an hour to an hour and a half. And I believe these were an hour and 15 minutes until it started to smell like something was burning. And the reason is I cut both ends off. I had never done that before. But I, there's a um, chef whose program I was watching. And he, now if you weren't watching, I would go off to the side and eat this because this is a waste of really good fiber. So I'm not gonna throw it away, I'm gonna save it. There, that's the skin. So Chef Ramses is his name. He, said when you roast potatoes, especially the sweet potatoes, cut off both ends. Well, I saw what they meant. I don't know that I've ever roasted my potatoes enough. I stopped when I could kind of press them. This time I did what it said on the recipe and I left it longer than an hour um, beyond when they felt soft. And they started oozing out of the sides. It's the, that ooze kind of smelled burnt, um, but the potato is the way it's supposed to be, which is really caramelized and very sweet. You know what? This doesn't have to be exact, so I'm not going to even worry about um, leveling it off. So what you saw me do is two big, really well-ripened uh, well, uh, bananas and three cups of sweet potato roasted. And then I add to that... Pumpkin pie spice, and if you don't have that, you don't want to buy it because you're not going to use it for, oh, baked apple or, or again, sweet potatoes or a, a um, let's say, a soup where you want an autumn uh, uh, spiciness, then just use cinnamon if you'd like, or cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, uh, etc. All right. I'm putting in an, a teaspoon of um, vanilla. And I was low on my vanilla, and when I went to Trader Joe's today, uh, they have an organic, and it's called Pure Bourbon Vanilla Extract. But if you read the label, it's from a place called Bourbon, the island of Bourbon or, or um, something like that, Lille um, Bourbon, known as Reunion. Actually, that's French, um, a French area. And it's a fabulous smelling um, Vanilla extract. So, teaspoon of that, half a teaspoon of that, but I wanted more, so I put more. Boom. 
and now we're going to make it. This is butterscotch pudding. So I made it the other night so that I could give it to Tim to see what he thought of it. And he liked it. And I said, what do you think it is? And he said, um, I don't know. Maybe it's, he knows that I would never use sugar. So he said, what, dates? Or He started guessing around. He couldn't guess. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have been speaking while I was doing that. I may have been muted. So what I was saying is that I gave it to Tim to taste. Couldn't guess what it was. And ended up um, saying, you know, I think that would be really good as a chocolate pudding, a chocolate spicy kind of caramely pudding. Okay, I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And then I'll tell you what I did about that comment of his. this is um, it's a beautiful caramel color kind of orangey caramel we're almost into fall we're what two weeks away from fall and so it would be very appropriate to have some lightly spiced fall vegetable desserts Some day I'll beat it like that to get things to settle and crack. Then I'll be really annoyed. And in the meantime, it works. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Marissa, I'll bring some into the office tomorrow so you guys can taste it. But being the attentive wife I am, <laughs> And he said, I'm not really crazy about butterscotch. I think it'd be really good with chocolate. I did something, and I'll show you what I did. Now, if you would like, you can put some roasted or toasted pecans on top and put this out on a buffet table. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, but we'll plate it. But he said, I'd rather have it in chocolate. So I don't know if you realize that cocoa, raw cocoa, cacao cocoa, ground cacao shells, uh, has no sugar, has no fat, really, next to none. A tablespoon of this, like 20 calories, and there's no sugar in it. And so I got out my raw cocoa, uh, organic raw cocoa, and it's just a powder. And I had a little bit of this, because I made a half a, a recipe um, for him or for us to taste. And I had some left, so I added the cocoa to it, and I believe I added two and a half teaspoons. But... I don't know if you can see this. It's chocolatey pudding. I'm gonna cheat, sorry. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Surprisingly good. So you've got butterscotch pudding that you could add nothing but cocoa powder. You don't have to add any more sweetness. It's almost like a um, semi-sweet uh, butterscotch. But I then took it one step further because in AJ's book, Sorry for being off camera. In AJ's book, she shows this recipe for butterscotch pudding. But then a couple pages, uh, pages later, she repeats the, the same recipe 
same ingredients. Well, the, instead of a teaspoon of vanilla, it's a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And she said, put it in ice cube trays and freeze it. And then whir it in the blender and make ice cream. So I thought, huh, why not do that? So what I did is, and I don't know if you've ever seen these, you buy them in a set of two. This is silicone. It's a silicone square, two tablespoons each, um, ice cube trays. And the things pop out rather easily. So I'm going to pop them in here. I wasn't even planning on showing you this, but I'll go ahead and do it since I have them. And we, maybe, I may have to let it sit a little bit and get a little softer. You wouldn't do this if you didn't have a high-powered um, processor because it might wreck it. You know what I'll do? I'm going to let it sit just a minute. And did you see I didn't bother cleaning it because why should I? If anything, that makes a... Well, okay. See, I didn't think and talk. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and try. And if it looks like the machine is just having the worst time, then we'll let it sit a minute. But as I said, there was no reason to clean it because it's the same ingredients. If, and if nothing else, it'll just make it easier to blend. So let's see what happens. I haven't done this. Um, wait a minute. hard for me to do it at this angle there. is that it is, um, hmm, it's not homogenized well. It's not sort of broken up in ice crystals. I happen to have, well, I have soy milk, uh, almond milk, and this one is, and they're all organic, uh, coconut milk unsweetened, always unsweetened. And so I'm going to put that in and see if that helps. I, I like the idea of the coconut milk in there. I didn't realize I had my little tube in here that you use when you're making um, mayonnaise. You know that. I'll show you what I mean. See that drip, 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 drip. So that's how you make mayonnaise. You put oil, but we don't do that. Got a little bit more. She said use as little as you can get away with, and then we'll have ice. Cream. Very cool. Oh, it's done. Now it's starting to turn into an icy mixture. Remove it a little bit, and then we'll put it in the freezer. <laughs> Bob is a really good wife. <laughs> I would go get the cocoa and make chocolate ice cream. <laughs> Tim loves chocolate ice cream, but I'm not going to. All right. Oh, you guys, this worked beautifully. Look at this. you doing? Got to get it out, be soon. Okay. Look, this is so beautiful. And because it's icy, it'll be quite different than eating it as a pudding. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. Yay. Okay. Now we've learned one other thing. Okay. Don't 
Don't judge me. Oh. That's really good to eat. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the freezer. And that's done. Let me show you. There. Isn't that nice? Yum, yum. All right. Okay, this out of the way. And now it's time for my favorite ever salad dressing. And actually, it's not my favorite salad dressing, it's not my favorite bowl dressing. So, what is the story about the title or the, the yeah, the name Buddha Bowl. Well, some people say that, well, it gets big like a Buddha's tummy, you know, spans over the top. But I like the story better that when Buddha, who was a monk, wandered the countryside, people would give him food. Uh, food. He would carry a bowl. I've been to India and I've seen how... Um, uh, different sects. You have the Hare Krishna who feed everybody, but you also have others in Thailand, same thing, uh, where the monks will go down a line of people with a bowl to be fed. Um, and that's how they they um, get their nourishment when they are doing good deeds and not making any money. Um, and so in that way, I like this because what you're looking at is carrying a bowl, creating your own, and filling it with a number of interesting and delicious foods. So I'll leave the bowls there for now, but let's get this dressing because the food itself is delicious, but almost always it's best if it's bound with something. And no, no, not bound. If it's drizzled with something, something that gives it um, spark and, and um, interest. So you have the recipe, and this is called Chef AJ's House Dressing. I asked her if I could use this. It wasn't something that I saw in that cookbook. It was something that I saw in a magazine, and this person was talking about how her family loves making um uh, bowls and she said our favorite and, and she said our favorite dressing is chef aj's house dressing everybody can't get enough of it and so i was i was intrigued decided to make it and i feel the same way i'm glad i'm making this because i'm out of it as of today's lunch i was out of it and um i need an excuse to make more so the ingredients are rather simple it's actually really high, uh, it's, um, it's not low calorie, uh, but it's high protein, it has fiber, and when you look at how little you drizzle on, the calories which give you protein and fiber and healthy fat, the uh, healthy fat from the tahini, is actually a very nourishing part of the bowl. So I'm putting in, and if you're new to plant-based, eating, you may not be familiar with nutritional yeast. It's used all the time because of the umami, the, the earthy, that, that extra, um, um, I'll call it richness that a food can give. It's kind of cheesy and it's grown, it's not grown on barley, it's a yeast, it's not the same as brewer's yeast, it's nutritional yeast, it's gluten-free, and it actually has, for example, three tablespoons have eight grams of protein. That's big, that's a lot of protein. Um, four grams of fiber and 60 calories. This is a wonderful, nourishing um, additive. And I get, and this is the, the very expensive version, more expensive version, I get the non-fortified because I, something about my, this, my genetic makeup has disallowed me from being able to 
assimilate folic acid. So the foods that I buy, if they're fortified, I look for folic acid. If they have it, I can't eat it. I get my folate from foods directly. That I can assimilate. It's something called an MTHFR genetic mutation. Boom. Need folic acid out of everything. And a non-fortified doesn't have it. Nobody else needs to worry about that. So you're better off getting the fortified nutritional yeast because then they add B vitamins to it and they add um, B12. And that's one of the things that um, uh, whole food plant-based people and, and vegans really must, and everybody, must think about and consider you must get enough of your B vitamins, but more importantly, B12. It, it, our body doesn't make it, and without it, um, you could have neurological problems, and et cetera, et cetera. So we were talking about this today with Dr. Dysinger on group, and he just said, I just take once a week um, one, I think it's 1,200 microgram um, pill, and I get mine from Trader Joe's, cheap, 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 a couple of dollars, maybe six. B12, 1,000 micrograms once a week, and it covers it. But don't think you can go without B12 if you're whole food plant-based. It's just not true. Okay, so what I've just done, you saw me tear up a date. This is a quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard. You can get low-sodium Dijon mustard. I just use the one I get from Trader Joe's. One of the reasons I like Trader Joe's is that this is from France. This is true Dijon mustard, and yet it's, what, three fifty dollars a bottle? In most stores, if you get good quality Dijon mustard, you're spending much, much more. Okay, you're done. Off, 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 off. Hold on a minute. I'm going to get these out of here. Now, if I had been paying attention better, and not gone into my ice cream deep dive and turned these, I don't know if you can see, I would have gotten them evenly browned on both sides, but honestly it doesn't matter because they browned because the pan was hot. So they browned on the top, they browned on the bottom. My, my veggies that were um, brushed with um, the combination of teriyaki and, um, or the tamari, uh, the soy sauce, and the um, balsamic vinegar are browned, and my chickpeas are nice and crispy and flavorful. Yay! All right, I'm going to put these on the stove and let them cool, and I'll get to that later. And these are our, oh, they're so pretty. Okay. And these are our other roasted vegetables. So they will all go into a container. They're going to cool off, and I'll use them when I'm making the bowl, a bowl, both bowls. Um, but we have the batons of carrot. We have the, the um, cauliflower, nicely browned broccoli. You can smell the, the enhancement of the browning um, that it has on the vegetables. And let me put this all here to cool off. Okay, stay. All right, now we put the date, the nutritional yeast, we put in a quarter of a cup of tamari. I need to have a third of a cup, and I just pour this. This is tahini. Tahini is ground sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. It's also loaded with um, fiber. And this amount of, um, of sesame seeds, in other words, I just put in, I think you know this. Well, you might not know. One-third of a cup is 5.5. 0.3, in other words, um, five tablespoons, 5.3 tablespoons, which is five tablespoons and one teaspoon, uh, splitting hairs, huh? So I can call that six tablespoons. Two tablespoons is eight grams of protein, so six tablespoons is three times that. I've just added 24 grams of protein to this dressing 
um, nine grams of fiber and a um, whole bunch of omega-3 fats. So I've added tahini. Now the other thing I have to add is six tablespoons of um, oh, six tablespoons of um, lemon juice. I buy lemons, squeeze them, keep them frozen, and then just defrost the lemon juice I need. So pop quiz. <laughs> How am I going to get six tablespoons of lemon juice? Fill a third of a cup and have it spill a little bit. <laughs> and that is, um, that's that. Then I'm going to blend it. And I'll tell you something. The first time I tasted this, I thought, oh, man, that is way too flavorful. Uh, because you have the, the strength of, I'm sorry, to be fussing while I'm talking to you. You have the strength of all that Dijon mustard, that cheesiness of all that um, nutritional yeast. As a matter of fact, I didn't put the full eight tablespoons that I just put in now. I put half that amount because I thought there's no way that this is going to be good. It's going to be way too strong. And then it was good. And then the next time I made it, I put more, and it took me three times before I followed the recipe finally. And it's the way I like it. Okay. So what did I put in? Oh, oh gosh, I'm glad I asked myself that because I forgot the water. We want a half a cup of water. All right. Now, half a cup of water, quarter of a cup, or four tablespoons of tahini, four tablespoons of tamari, six of lemon juice, the Dijon mustard, four tablespoons, six to eight tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and one medjool date. The medjool dates are, you'll find them in, in well, you know, find them there, but they're, they're grown in Indio um, nearest us. And they're thick, no, not so thick. They're just big, meaty, sweet, wonderful dates. The recipe actually called for date paste. You'll see that my recipe didn't. I just put the date in because to make date paste, you soak dates in water. Um, you make the paste. I've done it twice, and both times it went bad in the refrigerator because I didn't use it fast enough. And I thought, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to use dates. reason I'm blending it so thoroughly because what did I use that needs blending really is because of the um, the date that needs to be broken up if we use date paste it would take a second and then this is what we have Here. get this out of the way yum 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 Oh shoot, I, <laughs> I can see pieces of date in there. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Maybe I'll re-blend re it and maybe I won't. Normally I make this in my Vitamix, so I didn't wanna get that out. Well, it's always out, but I didn't wanna deal with it. I thought, oh, I'll just use this one and it wasn't strong enough to break up the date. In which case, if I had used date paste, it would have been a problem. So I got what I deserved. There you go. Oh, man. This is best if it sits in the refrigerator an hour or two, and the flavors, as they call it, merry. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. The next recipe, I'm not actually making. I'm just showing you. Because what you would be seeing is pretty much what you just saw. But in this case, it would have had to have been in the Vitamix because there's, there are a few uh, blenders that can take on raw vegetables and completely liquefy them. And that's why if you want to treat yourself to something really special, um, get a Vitamix. Because, for example, my morning smoothie, there's a carrot, a part of the beet, celery, six ounces of greens, uh, a, a lemon, 
um, frozen banana, and the whole thing, boom, with the Vitamix, turns into pure liquid, no graininess at all. Um, I can eat all that food, and yet I can drink it, and so all that nourishment is is um, feeds the soul and feeds the body. Okay, so if you look at this recipe, it's called carrot ginger dressing. Oh, I have to grab it for you. Okay, carrot ginger dressing. I even labeled it and put the date on here where I, when I made it. Love these. Um, the canning jars for storing my my dressings. This just happened to be, oh, I don't know what food I bought in this jar, but the, the label came off easily. And so of course I'm gonna use it. It would be a shame to throw the glass away. So this dressing I made and I I found that I didn't like it on a savory, highly savory Buddha bowl. I liked it if the if it had a more Asian flair to it, and we'll talk about the difference in in that um, the, I'll call it combination of foods. But what this dressing is, and it really should be thinner than this. I like it much thinner, and so when I use a little, I'll add more water. But it is it's so good that I could actually spoon it in and eat it. That's how good it is. Uh, sweet, if you look at the ingredients, it's carrot, a large carrot or too small, a half of an onion, interesting ingredients, few tablespoons of celery, a knob of fresh ginger. If you don't buy ginger this way, you can buy it sometimes in a, a, a tube where it's a paste and you just squeeze it out. A knob would be, and what I think I may have written is a half an inch. Um, maybe I didn't write that. What did I put? Ginger. Yeah, I put a knob. Um, but I used no, no more than a half an inch. Ginger can be so strong, it can overwhelm and, and, and sort of drown out everything else. Uh, a couple of medjool dates. And this is optional, but I buy it and I love it. And that is um, miso. Miso is fermented soy, and it is, you want to get organic, as I said, or non-GMO. If you can't find organic, you get non-GMO. It's a paste, and if mixed with boiling water with some little um, sea vegetables in it, like some kombu or some um, seaweed or nori and um, some sliced onion and a little bit of carrot, you can make your own soup cup with it. It's um, really quite savory. Well, it's also a, I'll call it sodium source. So this was our primary, well, not the only, because the tahini has a little bit of sodium in it. Um, but it is, at a tablespoon, this was a primary sodium source. And this is where you get the umami, this really strong, rich, wonderful flavor. So if you can live without leaving it out, get it and use it. Um, but it's not free. I mean, it's four fifty for this, five dollars for this, um, and you can get it in most markets. Um, but it lasts forever, just forever. And then rice vinegar. Uh, the rice vinegar, seasoned rice vinegar, is slightly, slightly sweet, and that's delicious. And a touch of soy, um, not soy. I'm sorry, sesame oil, roasted sesame oil. But again, this is so delicious. We had it on a wedge salad the other day. We did a wedge of, of a romaine heart and put some uh, shredded carrot, some uh, sliced green onion, and then drizzled that over it. Absolutely delicious. So that's what you're going to get with that one. I'm not going to uh, take the time to make it. And let's move on. All right, so... Let's talk about what we're here to do today, and that is to make these bowls. Uh, if you printed your recipes, you'll see some bowls that I made. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the ingredients that went in them. But again, let me get that straight. Ah! Again, it just happens to be whatever I have around. But because I use these all the time, 
I'm going to keep certain things around. So let me share my refrigerator with you without taking you there. Um, let me back a few things up and bring it over. Okay. For over 20 years, I owned a Tupperware company. I started when my son was four months old, became a manager, got the company car when, uh, let's see, in, gosh, within three, four months of being with them. And eight years later, my husband and I bought a Tupperware franchise. And this is all Tupperware. And so I primarily use Tupperware because I believe in it. But um, the fun was I love the product, but I love food. And so I got to combine the two and do demonstrations that way. Uh, so if you see these things, you don't have to have them. You can use baggies. I like reusable things. Some people would say, oh my gosh, don't throw your food in plastic. Well, I would say, oh my gosh, don't cook your food in plastic, but you can store it with no problem. Uh, otherwise, what are we storing? All glass? There's no room in a refrigerator or in a cupboard for all glass. Um, anyway, okay. So, show you a few things that we were working with. We were working with one of these sweeties, and boy, oh boy, find these. They're at Ralph's, they're at Clark's, they're at um, Trader Joe's. They call them, um, no, actually, they don't call them Japanese sweet potatoes because that's a different thing. They have a purple sweet potato that's lovely, but it's white fleshed. This one is Frida's Stokes Purple. And look inside, look at that. They are deep, deep purple. And in, maybe I could show you this and not do it, but maybe I'll do it. We'll see how time goes. In this picture right here, you'll see that I had a couple of slices and I've, I've had dinner parties where I've done this. Oh shoot, just do it, man, hold on. I always make my own hummus, and I happen to love this roasted red pepper hummus. Slice the potato, and I would have people come over, and as an appetizer, I just take the skin off. I'll peel the skin right off, and it comes off easily. As an appetizer, I will see the skin just comes right off. Anyway, I'll put a dollop, and look how pretty this is of hummus, this beautiful savory hummus, on the sweet potato. And not only is it really pretty, but it's so delicious. And so sometimes we will, if we want a simple meal, I'll just do a plate of these and we'll snack on them with some other um, uh, cold foods or hot foods, and that becomes our meal. Well, you can decorate the Buddha bowl with that. We can also use the hummus as a accent or even as a protein source because what is hummus? It's um, chickpeas. It's chickpeas, tahini. I don't use olive oil. Um, I don't put any oil in it, but I do use tahini, which is the sesame, uh, ground up sesame seeds and then lemon and garlic and some other um, seasonings. And it's, it's really tasty. So what are we making our bowls with? Let me show you some of the options. So let me pull out a bowl. Most, oh, well, I shouldn't say most. A lot of food bowls are made primarily with, um, uh, with grains as the base of them. They will start off with a grain and that will be the, and then everything grows from there. What I make has a lot more greens because as Joel Furman says, we should all have a huge green salad every day. The greens give us folate, they give us calcium. That's where we get a lot of our calcium as plant-based eaters. In, uh, we get them in greens. And just a side note, the calcium, for example, in spinach and in some of the um, the greens, like kale, sometimes doesn't 
sometimes doesn't assimilate as well as it could, but with the help of citrus, um, uh, citrus acid, in other words, citric acid, meaning lemon juice, lime juice, you can even use balsamic vinegar, it breaks down and is assimilated more easily. So I'm going to make one bowl in what I'm going to call the traditional um, Buddha bowl way, where you use a lot of grains. So what grains do you use? Now, this is something that I talk to you a lot about. And if you've been to my classes, you might be a little tired of my saying, batch cook, batch cook, batch cook. What is batch cooking? Batch cooking is making ahead a quantity of something or a number of some things. Let me tell you what I mean by that. For example, you see these pretty little potatoes? I didn't make this amount. I made, I don't know, 25 of them. Um, bought a bag of these little organic potatoes, put them in the, the, um, the uh, oh shoot, I want to call it air, the air pot. Um, oh darn it. Um, huh. Somebody remind me of what I'm trying to think of. The, my, um, pressure cooker. The, um, can't remember the name of my electric pressure cooker all of a sudden. But in any case, put it in the electric pressure cooker, cooked in eight minutes, and I had enough of these. They go into a container to last all week long. Tim has a couple of these every lunch with his sandwich. I put one or two. What? Oh, air pot. Oh, no, what is it? Yeah. Instapot. Instapot. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm showing my age. Anyway, thank you. The Instapot. Um, so that's cooked in a batch. The sweet potatoes, I always have a couple of these cooked at the beginning of the week, and I eat them all week long. Um, white potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, grains. Let me show you the grains that I made for you today to show you. This is black rice. Let me get you a couple of um, bags to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is called lotus rice, and it's a it's organic, what they call forbidden rice. And when you get into the rich purple colors of any food, you're getting into some nutrients. Let me turn this just a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out which way to turn it. There. Okay. You're getting into, um, well, for example, a this potato is going to give me different nutrients and feed my microbiome differently than this, this potato. Sweet potato purple, sweet potato red, and differently than this potato, which is a white potato, or the Yukon potato. So the more variety you have, the healthier your microbiome, the happier your body is going to be. Well, this rice is almost black. It's so it's so deeply pigmented. Anything deeply pigmented, that's why blueberries are the healthiest of all the berries, because it's deeply pigmented. Well, this rice is very deeply pigmented. So I can start out by putting a heap of that in this area of the bowl. And I like the idea of having a couple of grains. Let me put this back here. Um, okay. And so why don't I add to this? Oh, yeah, I'm going to use this. Okay. I'm going to add to this quinoa. Quinoa is a high protein grain. And I'll put a little of this on the other side. And then I'm going to add some greens. I wonder if I can get away with putting this here. Does that work? Oh, sure it does. Okay. All right. Why don't I use baby kale? 
And I get all these bags at Trader Joe's are organic and they're really inexpensive. And I'm going to put some greens because you've got to have some greens in here. And I'm going to throw in, let's see. Oh, why don't I put some of the broccoli and cauliflower and the other roasted vegetables, a few batons of carrots and a handful of garbanzo beans. Okay, a couple of pieces of roasted mushroom. Get back to this. And let's add to that, and all of these grains, the um, organic quinoa, they're inexpensive. This is buckwheat. We'll be talking about buckwheat in a minute. Uh, some of you aren't familiar with it. It has a very, I call it a rustic flavor. Uh, first time I made it, I thought, mmm, it's awfully strong. And then I just fell in love with it. I think it's terrific. Um, I'm going to put a crunchy, fresh vegetable. And these are the little sweet peppers that are really quite delicious. This is a brand that Trader Joe's just got. And you can bite it all the way up to the top because the seeds are right there inside of that stem end. But all of this is seedless. So we'll put that in. I'm going to add some potato. And you might be thinking, gosh, that is loaded with starch. Well, sure it is. Why shouldn't it be? Um, that is a healthy meal. And I wanted to add a little bit of fruit because I like fruit a lot. Oh wait, let's add some tomato. Let's put that right in the middle. Okay, and then for the fruit, I bought these figs. They have them at Trader Joe's, they had them at Costco. Organic figs. And they're simply delicious. And they're right now um, seasonal because this is when they're, they're ripening. So I'm going to put a couple of figs to add to this bowl. I'll put three, actually. And when I drizzle, I won't do that now because the person that has this does it individually. They're going to drizzle on their own dressing a little at a time. I do it a little at a time as I eat it. I could add, oops, I could add olives to this. I could add sliced radishes to it, which would actually be very pretty. I could add some nuts to it, or I could add some sesame or some sunflower seeds. And sunflower seeds are really, really nutritious. I think I'll sprinkle some in with the garbanzo beans. So this is what I call a grain Buddha bowl. It's pretty, where are you? Oh, there. It's pretty, it's nutritious, it's cool. I could have done it warm by having the, either heating the vegetables, and actually I would have normally put more vegetables than that, by heating the vegetables. But this is any combination of any food I want. I could add to it a little side treat of a piece of red, um, the red sweet potato, and add more to it that way as well. My favorite way, though, to do a bowl is to do it as a salad. And my favorite way to have a salad and to get a lot of greens in, and Tim and I both have this salad, even though his meal is normally a, um, a sandwich, and then the salad on the side, but he still gets a lot of lettuce because of what I'm about to show you. And that is to chop your salads. When you chop a salad, it makes a beautiful base to a bowl, but also you're going to, get, to eat that much more um, lettuce, that much more of your salad greens. 
There's a couple of ways to do it. I have fallen in love with, actually, I've had this tool. A person gave this to me when I was 17 years old. <laughs> That's a long time ago. I am, I, I'm still amazed that I'm four months away from turning 70 and it's like, nah, that's not true, but it is. Uh, but I was, what, 15, 16 when he gave it to me, I've always loved to cook. And he said, this is the best way to chop, like eggs ready salad. Well, that doesn't happen around here. Um, but I pulled it out when I started chopping salads and thought I had to do it in a different, more elaborate way. And I love this thing. So I went on Amazon to see if they still make them because this was a long, long time ago. And they do. It was called Food Chopper. It was $10. Um, and you're going to see why I like it. Another option would have been this. This double mezzaluna knife. And I'll show you both of them in action. And I was inspired to do chopped salads because AJ does them. And I like Tammy's Nutmeg Notebook. If you want some great whole food plant-based recipes, go to, to Chef AJ's site and to uh, Nutmeg Notebook. And she talks a lot about their top salads that they do every day. And she does them in this elegant, gorgeous bowl. So I thought, oh, well, I need an elegant, <laughs> gorgeous bowl with my initials written on it. It was a mass of money, but it is a collector's item. Um, made from one piece of wood, and if you buy it from them and mention her, you get the mezzaluna, mezzaluna meaning half a moon, half moon knife. And I decided I didn't want to mess up my bowl, so I haven't done it. Um, but I don't use that much salad anyway. But let me show you what I do. All of these are bags that I buy, all organic at Trader Joe's. Start with some beautiful kale. Kale is your richest, richest source of a lot of the, um, as a matter of fact, that's why it's called a superfood superstar, of a lot of nutrients that that um, just, again, make our system sane. I have raw spinach. One of the things you want to think about, somebody recently was talking to me about how, how much spinach she has, and she said, could that be a problem? And I like this because I like the purple lettuce in it. This is herb salad mix, and you'll throw in some, oh, arugula. Your body loves, your microbiome loves bitter greens. They have a different effect than non-bitter greens. They're part of the cruciferous vegetable family, and our bodies really like them. Um, now, I've got this big pile of lettuce. If I put this in the bowl, the bowl would over, uh, overfill or overflow. Um, I quite often put in shredded carrot. I also put in get this way. I also put in um, shredded cabbage, uh, especially red cabbage. Why red? Pop quiz. Why red? Well, again, because the darker the green, the redder uh, it is the more you're getting some really strong, wonderful, nutritional powerhouse um, nutrients. All right, to cut it, and this makes this so simple, this is basically a double blade. I'm just going to run it around here, and you'll see it'll go down to nothing, just nothing. So you can eat what would amount to an entire bag of this salad or more actually. I think I weighed it once and it was about seven ounces and that's a lot of lightweight greens. And so this one works that way. If you have a lot of lettuce for Tim and I, there's usually a, a higher bowl. It will start backing itself up in the back of this and you just push it off. And then this one is similar. It comes with, and, and this was when I, Google, I'm well not Google, but I went to um, Amazon and I was looking for uh, food choppers, handheld food choppers. This came up. It's a mezzaluna, but it's a double mezzaluna. Same thing. You just run it along here. I like doing it in a glass bowl because it's small. It gives me the size I want. Um, it doesn't scratch the bowl. I haven't done it in metal because I think they sound really creepy. 
maybe it's creepy in glass, but I guess it doesn't bother me. Anyway, it just, you're cutting right on through. You're just pressing. It doesn't take, it looks like I'm using a lot of strength. Not at all. I'm just pressing and kind of moving my uh, wrist. Then what I have is this very, not extra fine, but a finely enough chopped salad that everything, and be really careful here because it's, um, it's sharp. It came with, this was interesting, it came with these um, protectors, but the protectors, I cut these little notches in it because without the notches, the protectors wouldn't conform to the shape of the knife and they just pop right off. So if you get one of these, and again, this was 10 or $11. The chopper, the round chopper was 10 or 11 dollars. So these are all affordable. I could use this bowl, which I've always liked, and I could use a white bowl, which is kind of boring. But what I tend to use is one that gives me the most room. And we're almost done. Uh, the most room to put all this lettuce and just pack it on down, and, and then we get to pile things on. You know, when I retired, when we sold our Tupperware company after 20 years, so I was 28 years with Tupperware, training people to succeed, because I built a very big um, company. Um, one of the things that um, I did was I went into landscape design because I had um, created a two and a quarter acre garden that was constantly on garden tours. And somebody said, man, you should create a garden for me. And one thing led to another, so I even got a, additional training. Uh, plus I was a master gardener, I had done that. In any case, so I spent 15 years uh, in a business designing gardens. Now I'm designing <laughs> gardens on my plate and it's actually like that. I have the best time with it. And every day I take a picture of it um, because I think they're so pretty. All right, so you've already seen the black rice, the lotus rice and quinoa. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do, how about if we do buckwheat? The grains have fiber, the grains feed our microbiome, they have protein and they give you a feeling of satisfaction. If you don't have enough, if you do a whole food plant-based diet, but you don't eat enough um, starch, you're going to be eating potatoes, um, uh, grains, um, tubers, well, those are potatoes. You're going to be hungry. And if you're hungry all the time, this is not going to work. This is one of the things Tim and I talk about all the time. And that is how satisfying it is to be able to eat all the starch we want as long as, again, we're doing it in a way that is um, not loading us down with um, fats. Because the fats are where you get all the, the, um, all the calories, but it doesn't mean that we have a fat-free diet because tahini is not fat-free. And neither is our nuts and seeds, um, but our fat is coming from, and neither is soy, um, tofu. Our, our, I'm talking and working, um, our fat is coming from our foods, but coming from the whole food, not anything that we would pour in. So in this case, I'm going to add edamame. Now, edamame is raw soy. Well, actually, these are steamed. This isn't raw. But it's the actual soy bean. And they're delicious. You can get them frozen at Trader Joe's. and um, Or you can get them in the shell. And that's a fun thing to do. Dip, um, dip the shell into a, a soy kind of a base sauce. I'm going to add to this, uh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, leftover. This is a carrot salad that I make that some of you have the recipe for. 
from one of my other cooking classes. This was left over and it's delicious on the salad. And let's see, what else? How about a peach? How about a half a peach? Chopped. And how about if we arrange this on top? There. And then how about if we add, hmm, what do we have? Let's see. Um, oh, let oh wait, I'm forgetting. We have our garbanzo bean. No, I'm not going to use that. We have our roasted veggies that had the tamari as a sauce. So I'm going to put those because that'll be delicious with the soybeans next to them. And do you see what I'm doing? I could go on and on. Anywhere I can find room to throw something in, I can add. And all we're doing is adding more and more nourishment. And I'll put this on the side, sprinkle the top here with some pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate is loaded with antioxidants, and I could put seeds, I could put nuts, I could just go on and on. I even bake plantains, and I'll, I'll show you. I'll slice some plantain and lay those. Where would I put those? I think I'm overkilling there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it's delicious. And this is savory enough that, or this one would be a great salad to serve with Chef AJ's um, house dressing. And for protein options, when you're working with your salad, you don't have to. Um, cook further your garbanzo beans. You can open a can of black beans, drain them and rinse them. Garbanzos, drain and rinse. There are pre-cooked lentils. Lentils are so full of uh, protein. A half a cup gives you 10 grams. This is already cooked. They're French lentils from Trader Joe's, $3.50, and this will last you, well, it's two full cups of cooked lentils. It'll last you a long, long time with your bowls. Um, Okay, let me finish up by putting together a bit of dessert, and we'll call that a meal. Do any of you have any questions? And I also have in here, let me just show you what I keep in the refrigerator, because any of these could go on your bowl. For example, I just added some sliced red onion. I have sliced um, green onion. We have uh, shredded white cabbage and red cabbage. I have some mango here, some sliced mango. That would have been wonderful if I didn't have that peach. Uh, olives, black olives would have been delicious. You've already seen the sesame seeds. Uh, pine nuts, toasted pine nuts. Again, on and on and on. Let me... So, question? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, someone wanted to know if we could get the recipe for the roasted red pepper hummus. Oh, now if I give it to you tomorrow, well, let's see. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Write me at um, nan at nanscaseforhealth.com. Nan at the at symbol Nanscapes. When I was a landscape designer, my company was Nanscapes. And now that I'm not designing gardens and I'm designing insides, <laughs> it's Nanscapes for Health. So nan at nanscapesforhealth.com and I'll send it to you. Yes, because honestly, this is wonderful. Now I should say, let me give credit where credit's due. If if you have this cookbook, 
uh, written by Brenda Davis. This is her recipe. It's actually not the main um, hummus recipe, but these are the options for the main hummus recipe and the, the um, roasted red pepper one is in there, but I'll be happy to send it to you. And let's just plate up. And what's the diameter of the bowl that you're using? Nine ounces, I'm sorry, nine inches. Nine inches, okay. Um, and then yeah. the, in the circle chopper, is the circle chopper serrated or plain edge? It is serrated and it works. Where did it go? Well, I'll pick up this one. It, I don't know if you can see that it's, see how it's serrated? It's rather sharp. I've never cut myself with it because I don't have my fingers down there when I'm, oh, yeah. but it is, um, no, it is, here, I'm just going to open it. See that? It's serrated and it, it works if you still eat eggs and you made an egg salad, boom, boom, boom. You chop the eggs and you chop them easily and beautifully. Um, I've chopped a number of things using that, but I love it, just love it for my salad. Um, How do you make plantains? Oh, bake them at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. It's so satisfying because they split open and kind of they're, I was going to say scroll their guts. <laughs> they split open and kind of ooze a little bit their insides. Um, and um, and they're delicious. They're absolutely delicious. Well, they're, they're banana. They're starchy. So it's a banana flavor that's starchy and somewhat um, chewy. Uh, and so you bake it with a peel? Look how pretty that is with the banana on there. Um, you bake it with the peel, Nan? Wait, say it again. You bake the plantain with the peel, right? Yes, with the peel. And and okay. put it on foil, or actually I use parchment paper. See, now this, this is bulging. This is exactly the size I have every day for lunch. This isn't as bulging, because to make it more bulging, I would have had to put way more um, grain on it. And when you go to, like, Yoshinoya or any of those restaurants, you're getting this mass of rice or grain, which I believe in, but I think that we're better with more veggies and things. Um, and so I could have put far more vegetables on here and giving you that much richer of a, uh, of a lunch bowl. And then with your, um, with your butterscotch pudding, We'll put a little bit of chopped nuts, the, the chopped pecans, and there you have it. It's just a lovely little, and you'll get to taste this tomorrow, Marissa. Sorry, everyone. Awesome. I don't mean to tease you. Um, and what dressing would you put on these bowls? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> Chef AJ's. These are, I think, too savory for the, um, the carrot ginger. The carrot ginger, is, again, is slightly sweet and it's better with, with a light Asian bowl. For example, if I had used cabbage, if I had just used the cabbage, maybe the quinoa, the sugar snap peas, edamame, shredded carrot and, and sliced radish, and, and um, that might have been fine. And maybe even, not the bitter greens, but the more savory greens, like romaine, chopped romaine. That's better with that kind of a salad because this is a famous dressing in Asian, in Japanese restaurants. A carrot ginger dressing is usually served with iceberg lettuce on a bowl in a lot of Japanese restaurants. That's what it's inspired by. And again, I could eat it by the spoonful, but I, it doesn't blend nearly as well as something that is this strong. This is so strong that a little of it will, I, again, I'm not dressing it to cover the flavor the way you usually do with a salad dressing. It's simply enhancing it and making it sing. Any questions? Any other questions? I'm so glad you are here today. Go <laughs> eat well and take very good care of yourself by eating like this. You could eat every meal of the day 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner with these kinds of foods. You don't need animal products and be the healthiest you've ever been in your life. Um, Tim and I have been whole food, plant-based, vegan, but I'll use the word whole food, plant-based because a lot of vegans don't eat well. They eat Oreos and Cokes and French fries, and that's vegan and it's not healthy. Whole food. This is all whole food. And it is exactly what our bodies want. It will keep you nourished, but it will also keep you well, um, fighting all kinds of viruses and diseases. So take care, people. If we're finished with questions, I want to thank you for hanging in there this extra few minutes. And thank uh, Marissa for doing what she always does so well. And thank Arwen, who came in and made this new format of ours work. Um, it's easier for some people not to have to download Zoom, but to simply hit a link, and that was the whole point. And um, good night, everyone. Oh, by the way, Chef AJ, oh, I'm so glad I remembered to tell you this. Oh, I did tell you. Chef AJ is going to um, be with us on Tuesday, possibly, probably, 6 to 7, next Tuesday the 15th. And can't wait. You'll be able to ask her questions. Let me know any questions you may have in advance, um, and um, we'll have a really good conversation. So good night, everyone. Thanks, Arwen. Thanks, Marissa. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nan. Good night.